him. But Talon, wow. go for the Templar Assassin and Elder Titan there as their third and fourth pick. Interesting. I mean, it is. It's uh, interesting because I've I've seen some people, I've seen the discussion of TA countering the Lina. The point is that TA has the refraction and Lina, you know, she have to chew through that and it's like seven, eight. Uh, fraction charges, I think seventh max level, and then later on you get another eight at level at level twenty five with the talents, which you can get. You know, like TA farms fast. She's one of the few heroes, range heroes, who can compete with the Lina in terms of farm. So there's that. But the damage from the TA is a lot of it comes from her minus armor, and you are up against a treant protector. So true. But then you've got the ET minus armor aura as That's well. True. So it's like you double it up, and then yeah, people will just die in one hit if they're both together and that can be pretty damn disgusting to see like do, do you think that's enough minus arm with like the meld and the et presence or do you think you know getting a desolator is still a good idea you still you, should, you still want to get the this i think it's like ingrained into the, the templar assassin's <laughs> brain you have to get it the uh the sorry this way sorry guys mm -hmm. i'm starting it's been a long day um one thing that i'm worried about is that ET, you mentioned the mice armor, but I think it's only base armor, which is the armor that you only have like naturally, mm -hmm. not from the uh, the items that you pick up. True, yeah. To be fair though, Lina doesn't pick any any item that gives you extra armor, right? She's not like you're going around the assault cuirass. Mm. So it's a good pick. Actually, the more the more I think about it, I'm like, it's, if it's base armor, it's fine for Lina. I think living armor is extra armor. It's like a green amount given to you, but mm. you know, Templar Assassin can easily remove something like what? 14 with Deso and Meld. Yeah, I think Meld, I think about Meld is like Meld is like eight, Deso six. It's like 14 around that on that mark. And ooh, now that's a hero that can go through refraction charges very easily. Yeah, with profit. That is pretty big. Is that so? So with the nature's no, the nature's profit. Now there's a TA. Is the nature's profit the off lane TA carry, or do you think this might be like an old meta and TA goes into the mid lane with the nature's carry still? It seems like they're thinking it's going to be a, a carry nature's profit and mid TA, right? Because mm -hmm. I've seen TA go carry in mid, and I've seen nature's profit go carry in off lane. I've never seen nature's profit mid, and I've never seen a Templar assassin off lane. And since they're banning off laners for uh, on Blacklist rivalry, they're like, yeah, we know you guys haven't picked a hero mm -hmm. for. Sorry, for, for uh, jabs yet, so that's what we're going to be focusing on. Yeah, definitely. They like... could put... oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking they could put the Nature's Prophet offlane, put the Templar Assassin carry, and we can't... could see Talon, you know, flip this script and take a mid laner at the, at the end, but they also don't have last pick. So it's not going to be a gotcha mid lane at the very end. You know, Blacklist will still mm. have time to reply to it. Yeah, definitely. Like If they did want to do that, it'd have to be someone who has the flexibility where it's still a slight question mark for Blacklist and, you know, they don't get you know, drafted into a little awkward situation. Uh, but the final ban was actually a Keeper of the Light that came out there from uh, Blacklist. That's so they're not true either. Yeah, that's quite interesting one to get rid of. Um, but still, only six seconds of reserve time on top of the 15, so not a huge amount to work with. And Talon, not interested in even touching it, and they wow. go for the Bloodseeker. So it is... So is it... Hang on, Bl Bloodseeker carry Natus Prophet offlane yes. or other way around? No, I'm, I'm feeling like it's a Bloodseeker carry and Nature's Prophet offlane, but we'll have to find out very soon about it. Mm -hmm. um, that's... Okay, so the TA has to farm. Like That's the thing about the TA. You, you usually come online when you have at least two items, something like a Blink BKB or Deso Blink and BKB. Like even, you know, once you get, go for the trifecta first before showing up. Mm -hmm. Bloodseeker, Nature's Prophet... I don't know, I'm not... It feels like Talon's draft is a bit on the greedy side to me. Blacklist, what they go with? They go with the Enigma recognizing that hey as well actually enigma versus rubik wow okay and yeah. it's going to be the carry bloodseeker off lane nature's prophet which we thought about they are on talent side their main goal seems to be that they want to do well against raven's lena now they don't really care about everything else they just want to get you well against raven's lena they have uh, jabs showing up with the nature's prophet to protect anyone who's been you know, put to sleep mm -hmm. as well as i don't know i'm I'm feeling we're awkward about both drafts. I was liking what Blacklist had until the Enigma comes up and you're like, oh, you're up against the Rubik. You you sure? <laughs> oh. I mean, it, it, it does seem like uh, an Enigma pick to maybe bring 
Ku's confidence back up because yeah, in that first game on this league where he got absolutely shut down, like he didn't even cast Black Cole the entire game, never went on cooldown, it was that bad for him. And, you know, this is definitely a better time, obviously versus the Rubik, gotta be a little bit careful we don't give it away, but at least everyone else on the side of Blacklist does have some way of you know, cancelling out that uh, out the stolen black hole. You know, they've got LSA, yes. the Overgrove, Smoke Cloud, Sleeping Dart, Silence as well from Carl. So, you know, it, it will be. It's not going to be the easiest black hole usage coming out from Q if he does manage to steal mm. it. Um, and the way you were saying as well that they've drafted to mainly focus the Lena, it kind of makes sense because without the Lena, where is the damage really coming out from the side of Blacklist? It, it takes a fair bit of time for the, the Death Prophet to start ranking up, you know, with the Exorcism yes. and, and the Spirit Cyphers and whatnot. So there is going to be a lot of weight on Raven's shoulders to throw out those little fireballs as quickly as possible and try to get kills. So yeah, if, if Talon could just take out Raven straight away, I could definitely see Blacklist rivally having some issues going forward. Mm, I agree with you to a certain extent. Uh, I do think that Blacklist's damage does take a long time to come out if you don't have the Lina. But you do, you have like if the Lina dies, you still have the back of the Black Hole, which is the you know percentage damage with the Midnight Pause. You have Death Prophet dealing on top of it. It's they've got some damage. I don't think it's like gonna be something like you know 90, 80 percent Lina. So Lina is gonna be like you know 40 percent of their t of their team's damage. You still have other sources that can help you out. So I'm okay with it with what they have i i think that uh they're gonna be okay on blacklist international i don't know which which side to pick though on one side you have lena and enigma and treant like the trifecta I, you know i'm gonna go blacklist i, I look at it, i think i gotta go with blacklist i think they had a better draft yeah huh? yeah I, I, I think i'm gonna go for talon myself to be honest with you like in both game number one they've been able to take a you know relatively early dominant lead and start you know, build, yeah, getting a good advantage. And it feels like with this draft, like a, a good early start to Nature's TA and Bloodseeker definitely feels like you just have so much momentum and you could potentially just run over Blacklist. So if they do win the lanes, I could definitely see, yeah, just Talon just flying all over Blacklist and it'd be very, very difficult to stop them. So yeah, that's my choice. So we're split. 50-50. Oh dear. I hate, and it, we just started. We just got here to, for the first time. This is not good for our marriage. You know, we're disagreeing from the start. <laughs> That's alright, as long as if I keep the house. Uh, I, I, do I get the kids? I want the kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep the house. I, I... Take, take the kids, mate. Take them. Oh, I'm having the house. <laughs> oh, here we, do. we might see a little fight for this uh, top bounty here. Actually, Jab's scouting out, so I don't think anyone's going to get cool. Actually, he's ascending a lot of trillions right now. I guess someone's got to try and grab that top bounty or just get denied away. And instead, yeah, the rest of uh, Blacklist come up. Forcible to disengage. Jabs is going to take a couple of whacks for good measure. That's about it. Oh, body blocks from the Treants. Can Jabs do some real work here? He's trying his best to. The Treants are about to time out anyway, and yeah, Tims is gone. Tims is starting off with the early Orb of Venom, by the way, just so he can add a little bit of extra harass. And you blink strike, you do a little bit more damage with the Orb of Venom. It's nice. He's going to go up against Ollie, though. Ollie on the Elder Titan, this is not the easiest hero that you can fight against. And when Enigma uses the Eidolons, sorry, the Micro yeah. that's just extra targets for his Astral Spirit. So he gets even more attack speed and, sorry, attack damage and uh, movement speed. Yeah, definitely. It's like, you got these little tiny daggers going up a briefcase. So who do you think's going to Actually, no, he's got skin. It's not a briefcase anymore. It's a hammer. I'm disappointed. I want to see the briefcase, man. Here the guy is, look, look at him. He's doing 100 damage already. And he's moving. What has he got? He's got... 17 <laughs> bonus movement speed. I didn't even realize the spell gives you armor, by the way. It's bonus armor, speed, and damage. Pretty damn wild what can, what can give you. Yeah, it's like one of the easiest ways to just dominate lanes. Just hit a load of creeps, get in the lane, get a couple of heroes, and all of a sudden you're, you've basically got a divine rapier with armor and movement speed. Like, <laughs> what's there to argue about? I mean, I'm sure Tim's is probably saying this is broken. Leave me alone, please. But uh, yeah, Oli's yeah. very happy. I, I, th I think anytime a Ricky player says something is broken, it's like, no, no, you have no right to say anything, sir. You, 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 you know, you've been playing these filthy heroes. You, nothing is broken compared to Sleeping Dart. But yeah, Ollie is getting massive extra stats, and uh, Tim's, he's just scared to get close, and rightly so. Astro Spirit's got basically no cooldown compared to its duration. Yeah, I, I, I don't, like no downtime. So another point to note as well is the fact that because who's making Eidolons, it's more connections for the spirit, which means more bonus damage and armor and movement speed. 
So it's actually quite a nice pick to go versus the Enigma. Yeah, just give them that huge buff up. It just destroys the Eidolons and everything. It's really, really nice pick this ET. I'm loving it. I'm loving it too. And, you know, usually uh, you think you know, it's, it's so strong, what uh, this Enigma and then this Ricky combo, but uh, ET just doesn't care. Everything helps him out. Denied. Definitely. It's been good, but we'll have a look at the top lane. How's this going on so far? Six and oh, seven and two there to Raven to Jabs is four and four, so just a slight lead for the Lena. But you know, some of those CS might just be the treants, so it's not really yes. the highest bounty. So you know, it does skew with the stats a little bit. Yeah, and AU is also having a bit of the same problems that Tim's are having. He's not able to really go close against these two ranged heroes, especially when one of them has a Blightstone of Nature's Prophet. So. He goes up, jabs, hits him, hits him, Q, Q reduces his damage. It's like, all right, I have no less damage, less armor. It's not fun for me. So uh, the lane's not quite going out amazingly for Talon right now. Uh, not the best at all. Well, I say that as jabs has uh, four CS. So, I mean, they're going well, but the harass is there, you know? Yeah, it's true. Well, I suppose they just got answers to deal with the uh, the treants. You know, Raven could just right-click them away. Just the big club fists that come in as well from AU helps deal with them. So it's like both both teams have gone for an off laner, which you know has a few summons to help get an advantage. But both teams also have an answer to those summons, and yeah, just really shutting them down quite nicely. Uh, we've not really touched on this mid lane. How's this going down? Fourteen and two there to Makoto to thirteen four Carl, but he, Carl obviously has a few more creeps still to come. So it's just going slightly in the favor of the DP. Yeah, the, the difference between these heroes, though, is that they're not... Like, they complete, they play completely different roles. They're both mid laners, but what they do for the team is different, right? Carl, mm -hmm. you want to sort of rotate around the map, get uh, some towers down with the exorcism. Uh, Mikoto, no, his job is just if he's... There's stacks for him. And you can actually see AU is already going to block these camps because he knows what Mikoto wants to do. He knows he wants them to just go and get stacks. So he's already blocked them with a couple of sentries. But that's what TA does, you know, first mm -hmm. 17 minutes, you're going to see her disappear, not do anything for the team. Whereas Carl has to be very active to get, you know, get use out of the DP. Yeah, yes. definitely. I mean, it's still the whole, was it Desolea Blink Dagger timing for a TA. As soon as you get those two items online, then yeah, that's when you really start to see the hero popping off and doing all sorts of work. Oh, yeah, Carl, let's see if he's, uh, you know, what damage he's going to be able to do with the first exorcism usage when it eventually comes out. Yeah, I mean, maybe you want to help bottom. The thing is, you probably, you know, you want to get one of those, you know, the top or the mid tower, just because that opens up Roche for you. And you are up against, you know, a a Templar assassin. That's a hero that can take Roche very easily. So you want to cut away, cut away, take away as many of her access points as possible. Yeah, definitely. We to stop her from recovering and progressing the game is going to be a big, big help. But uh, still yet to see a first blood. Like, what, what lane do you think we're actually going to see this in? But it, it just seems very even at the moment. I feel like it would be. I don't think we're seeing. Like, we might see one or two kills, but I can predict which lane we're going to see a kill in, right? I was thinking top, which, you know, the Trinit lane is very strong. But you have Rubik as well as Nature's Prophet doing good harass. They seem to be fine. And oh, Q. Looks like he is able to. Look at him. He already gets the D Wars off, knowing that AU would be blocking them. Like, the mind games from the pros. You know, yeah, they're smart. Good. There they are. I mean, it looks like he was at least able to stop the ancient stack at the very least. But yeah. you know, he's he's got another sentry ward to use. He's going to be putting that down eventually to, uh, you know, once again reblock the camps. But Q's just constantly running after him, being a real nuisance. Yeah, thanks to those boots, right? But very, yeah, just very clever by Q, making sure that he gets the he he put the sentries before, like he didn't like try to stack, and it's like, oh, it doesn't stack. Then he puts the sentries. He's like, no. He assumes immediately that AU puts them down. We saw them walk in, but a good guess by him. Mm -hmm. Very, really good. And, uh, well, everyone's still just sitting back farming. The only people who are suffering so far are actually the two off laners. Uh, mm -hmm. 17 CS there for Q, 18 for Jabs. And again, they have a lot of denies, but it's probably just more of their summons that are, mm -hmm. you know, bumping up these stats. So it's, Rough. yeah. Probably their own children, right? You know, they're like, yeah. no, no. <laughs> you're not mine, you're, you know, you, you're adopted or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, just like food for the grinder, eh? Just throw your kids in there. Who cares? Oh, dear. That they're, is, they're that's a horrifying image, <laughs> honestly, but still. <laughs> hey, Dota's a horrifying game, man. You know, um, if, it, if it wasn't so brightly colored and, colored and everything, it'd be considered a horror for sure.
Especially with how the uh, your pubs can go sometimes. Have you seen, did you see the uh, short film contest for TI-11? Because they had a bunch of them with Lifestealer. They're pretty, they're pretty horrifying stuff. Like, pretty damn scary. If you guys haven't seen them, you should check them out. One of them is how Lifestealer invades a person's body. And the other one was uh, an RTZ clip. Like, RTZ had uh, 1 versus 5 in a TI match. And mm. someone made that into a, into a film. It was really good, but super gruesome. It was, yeah. Uh... Yeah, definitely cool. You know, some people can get pretty damn creative out there and do some uh, funky stuff for sure. Interesting to see what they could do in the uh, the next TI show for sure. But still, 1k gold, well, less than 1k so far in the hands of Talon, but there is Mikoto now farming up this stack. We might actually see the first little bit of gold chart advantage going into their favor. Um, there is also a triple on the Ancients as well. Does he want to take that now, or do you think he just clear up this stack and then go into uh, back to lane? But 23, Ooh, just oh. able to get away. The power of phase boots. Yeah, despite the slows and everything, if it was a level three Malefice, you might have got it. But then the Marco version is your like lane securing build, so you always have to max it out. It's always weird when you're in that situation. You know, it's like I could go for the suboptimal build and get a kill, or do I you know, go for what's right and let it go? That's a um, but he does have the, um, but you know, Cuckoo, he's got the uh, ultimate now. Very scary if uh, 23 Savage walks next to him. He ha I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Cuckoo just straight away, you know, black holes him and gets a kill. Yeah, no reason not to be the freest kill. Especially if, you know, there is the help of Tim's to like, drop the cloud in case he does manage to survive for that initial burst of damage. And that could potentially be where we see the first blood getting picked up. And so as you were saying, Cuckoo with the black hole ready, ready. And I mean, does, can 23 even risk going back to the lane or does he just have to go jungle now? Seems like he's not happy to go jungle, but uh, Cuckoo is not happy to give him the jungle. And, ah, no, just sending a couple of creeps there. And uh, Carl, the mid lane, uses his ultimate, just gonna stand in the trees, do some damage to the tower. He needs to be careful because Mikoto is here. And yeah. so is Ollie, actually. Yeah, both support some talent rotating into the mid, but it looks like he will fall back just in time. Portarium, no disrupt in the game to glimpse him back, and he should be able to get away. Stomp does get the connection, but again, just no further reach. I mean, that's first EXO usage. Didn't do that much damage to the tower there, so I think Talon aren't too sad about that. Oh, for sure. Like, for them, if they go for a tower for Talon's side, you're going to bring it down. You know, you have the TA, you have the Nature's Prophet. Yes, you're up against a tree and protector, but you still have a lot of raw physical damage on your side. Like... Blacklist, they have that later with the Lina, and of course they have the Enigma for all stages of the game, but early on it's mostly going to be the Exorcism coming out from Carl, and every time that's wasted, it delays the game, and late game, well, it's kind of it's kind of hard to bet against the Lina-Enigma combo, but if there's one lineup that can go against it, it's a Nature's Prophet, Bloodseeker, and TA. Yeah, definitely. And it's going to be a definitely work cow from here for AU, try to keep his little towers alive, but... We'll see how much uh, aggression Talon actually decides to put on him, but this is nearly 10 minutes now without a first blood. Like, it's Southeast Asia. Well, what do you mean, Sam? We've had first bloods like super early before. I think the latest one I've seen is like four minutes in this entire yeah, tournament. <laughs> yeah, but the region has slowed down a lot. We used to be, you know, everyone thinks it was being a very aggressive, but the DPC average match for Southeast Asia is like 45 minutes. All other regions are, are between 37 to 39, so. Uh, we're definitely on the slower side of, uh, of how we how we approach the game. Methodical is the better word to use it. Uh, methodical or scared, yes. scared gaming scared. at its finest. Hey, we are C players, man. We know no fear. <laughs> oh, you gotta have no fear picking anti mages as position fives. I'll give you that. Or mid, you oh. know. <laughs> anyway, One, two, it's it's either twelve or I. 12 or IDC, you know, it's like, oh, well, hey, you took my carry. I'm going mid anti mage, I don't care. And uh, by the way, for Talon, they take the first tier one tower. So opening up the map, this tree and protector. You remember, you have a tree and the death prophet, and you lose the tower first. Not a good look for Blacklist. Yeah, it's very nice targeting up there from Talon. I mean, especially even though AU not even spamming points into living armor, actually prioritizing Leech Seed. Okay, he puts his fifth level into living armor at the very least. Maybe he sort of regrets that earlier leveling, potentially. And the problem with level 1 is that the cooldown is twice as long as the duration, so it feels really awkward. You always have to use it very carefully. And by the way, Blacklist, they get a tower of their own. One of the... 
It's fine. It's a good tower. The bomb, the bomb tier one for radiant, I would say, is also not that relevant, but at least it gives you access to the enemy to your forest. So, like blacklist, they are able to control the game, the map a little bit more with that tower down. Yeah, definitely. And Coop definitely uh, just having a nice game so far. Okay, game number one, he got shut down hard. Game number two, eh, it was about even. But this one, he's definitely. Uh, Pulling ahead in the lane. I'm actually still quite down there in terms of level. Despite the fact he's taken his tier one, he's not miles up on the chart by any means. But now that he's got all this extra space to work with, it could be pretty nice. Meanwhile, Tim's in some danger, but avoiding the stomp there with the uh, tricks of the trades. Does take some wax as he's running out, but still alive. No fast blood 12 minutes in. This is getting a There's... bit ridiculous, man. This is, this is no. very, very slow. No, this is how it should be. They have a gentleman's agreement. You know, uh, I won't kill you, you won't kill me. Like, they both agreed, like, okay, 50 minutes and then we fight. Have you ever had that? I remember I was, I played StarCraft with my brother. He says, I won't kill you until you build a base for 30 minutes. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm building a base. And he's at like 15, whatever that Protoss big ship is that has millions of ship inside. Oh, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, he has a billion battle cruisers there. And I can remember that one. That's the Terran one. Yeah. Yeah, my, well, my uh, my StarCraft experience was playing 2v2s and just walling off half the map with all the barracks and stuff. That's that's what I did. And that's why I found fun, <laughs> which is why I was no good at the game. And uh, I had to stop playing. Very sad stuff. But even still... Blacklist... Oh, wait, come. Sorry. Blacklist, they're going to have to think about some way of uh, walling off this mid-tier one, because uh, tower, they're not really investing heavily into it, but they're still going to be able to get the tower unless Blacklist does something to, uh, to combat this. But they're bringing people, but no one in the front lines. Like, no one's actually taking the hits and keeping it safe. Yeah, it's true. I mean, Talon know that doing this chip damage versus a Treant doesn't really mean too much. So they keep hanging mm. around. But, yeah, it looks like eventually they're just going to disperse. So we'll go back to farming. And, you know, after time, AU will be able to heal this tower back up to a decent standing. But, uh... It's still, still going to take some time, though. We have to, uh, I don't, I, by the way, I like his item build, right? You want to get two points of leech sheet because the... Slow as well as the heal nearly double at level two, it just makes it so much better. But in this game as well, like talent, they're playing super fast. It's a grandmaster TA on Makoto. Yeah, he definitely plays the hell out of it. I'm kind of surprised he's not top of net worth though. You normally see TAs just flash farm, as you were saying, just killing stacks and whatnot. But uh, he's not steaming ahead by too much. He's actually the Lino who's comfortably in that first position right now. But Makoto back to hitting onto this tier one tower. And bit by bit, it is going down. Just the two points into living armor isn't enough to keep this building uh, alive. And yeah, it looks like it will fall. Ooh, they actually, yeah, they get the deny. Good job by Tim's, but that is one of the, your critical towers. Luckily, they are dire, right? Mm -hmm. Dire losing their mid tier one is slightly more acceptable than the Radiant, just because you still have that outpost. So you always have that Roche access point, but it's not it's not what you want right you are the team again like we said with the treat as well as the death prophet yeah definitely and uh makoto getting very close now to his blink 400 gold is that the cue for them to you know start getting aggressive looking for kills and action or is this still a case of waiting you know get some more items up Wait until he has the shards, because now then you have that long range size. So you look at the cast range of the TA psionic trap. It is actually like twelve hours. It's like the whole screen, so it's very easy for him to just throw it on uh, the Enigma and just cancel it. You, know, you want to have as many cancels as possible. It's it's a great item to have. It's like a great uh, adjustment coming out from Miko. He's not going for the classic build. He's just going to go for the shard early on, so he can shut down the Enigma. Add that with a blink dagger, and you can you can psionic trap almost half a map away. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a good read, like you're saying, getting those extra cancels for the black hole. Because um, before that, where else they really have to stop it? It's just the, I suppose you've got the the blood right coming out from mm -hmm. the blood seeker, telekinesis. Oh, Oma onto AU, but he just TPs away. <laughs> okay, even with the uh, rupture and nature's wrath coming out, they still can kill the tree. And uh, I thought Q might be in trouble because the sleeping dart was a bit, was used on him, but 16 minutes, you know, I, I checked on chess, someone was like, 8 minutes, no no kill? I was like, well, wait till you see what we're good at, what we have in store for you, buddy. Yeah, the fifth, the 5 minute delay is just funny to watch chit chat, uh, chit chat, <laughs> Ch Twitch chat getting, <laughs> Twitch chat getting very upset about the no kills, but uh, yeah, they've, they've got a nasty surprise waiting for him. 
This just keeps on going on. But, uh, I mean, hey, this does mean without anybody dying, everyone's farm is looking pretty damn good. Like, even yes. Q got 4.6k already. Like, 8.8 .8 there for Raven. Yeah, it's just really everyone is getting beefy real quick. And I like what they were... I mean, that's a nice adjustment by Talon. Obviously, the TA is going to go farm. They just put Q in the mid lane. You give the Rubik a lot of net worth. And it pays off, you know. He's already got the Aether Lens. He's going to go for the four staff next. So, you know, it makes it a little bit, a tiny bit harder to steal the black hole, but yeah, they'll get the, the the blink at some point. That's true. I mean, the uh, Makoto as well. With this Desolator about to be completed, right? Do they go, or do they still have to wait for that blink? Like, <laughs> surely they, surely they can look for something now at the very least. Actually, looking for something. That's Blacklist. They've gone for this four-man smoke move. Who do they find? Might just be Q, but hey, any kill at this point is a very worthwhile kill. No, no kills, please. Longest game without kills. I do not want any kills. Nobody dies. Q, you better not die, man. You know, you, be you better not. Oh, well, he's gonna try his best. Well, Carl, though, committing the exism, just gonna start whittling away at this tier one tower. And uh, maybe Talon might decide to start trying to bring it, just throwing in the astral spirit for now. They're doing a good job of killing the creeps of the backlands there with the trap and the long range spells. So, no creeps to help take this away. It's all down to the exorcism, which, to be honest, should be enough damage. Actually, with the glyph, it might be able to survive. It's going to be very close, though. But actually, you know what? Look at the position of Talon. They're not interested. Yeah, they just let the tower go. All right. Ends up being a trade of tier ones in the long run. But Roshan, number one, is the item online there for the side of Talon. And just look how quickly it dies. All right. This could be it. The first blood that we're going to find might just be a 5-on-5 five five engagement. Who's going to get the jump though? That's the question. Observe wards get scouted out. Taken away from Tim's. And I uh, jinxed it. Everyone just runs away. God damn it, man. What is happening? I just don't know. I just don't know. It's, it's just not stopping. The game will continue forever without any kills. And... Uh, I don't know what type. I mean, the, the net worth lead isn't even changing either. It's still pretty much less than 1k into the advantage of, uh, of Blacklist. And I believe you might have... I think I think Otomo may have disconnected. I'm on my own again. Right, back to solo casted, ladies and gentlemen. And there's only so many ways I can try and hype up a near 20-minute game. Oh, he's back! Oh, there's no deaths. I, I thought for sure I'd come back and someone, someone would be dead. <laughs> what what time did you go? Like just before the Roche kill? A minute. It was just a minute. You know, it seems like... My, all right, if you're in Malaysia, do not go for time. I'm just going to tell you, just go get time internet. It is it is garbage. I moved in and I had this only one available at the time, so I had to take it. Hey, 20 minutes, no kills? Really? Can we get it? I, 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 I thought, you know, I thought oh, there's no way. There's no way where the mid tower was going to fall. Someone's going to fight, but... 20 minutes, no kills. It's going to happen. What? How often? I was going to say, do you, do you know what the record is for no kills in Dota? I have no idea. I think we're going to make it very soon. There's no... I I cannot think of a game where I've seen 20 minutes and 0-0. Zero, zero. There's just no way this happens. Yeah, this is fun. No position fives dying. No ganks into the mid getting kills. I mean, we saw people nearly dying multiple times, but... Yes. Still, no one's actually able to achieve the oh, deep up. Maybe we might see it now, but Cohen's in danger. He does have the Aegis. And Talon just with a couple of four staffs. We'll disengage, but it looks like they want to try and stick around and take the fight. Sleep will get the connection onto AU at the top there. Makoto, still no blink to drag it back in, yeah. but with the use of the Telekinesis and the Glepid, but four staffs again, bringing him to safety. And we were saying earlier, you know, because no one's dying, everyone has farm and money, so we have lots of four staffs out, and again, no kills. Still nothing. All right. Do we think we're going to lose a tier? I think it seems like we're going to lose a tier two before we lose a hero. But are we going to lose tier threes or Araxes before someone dies? That would be crazy. Well, that would actually be bonkers. And we might even see it where we don't even get a kill on Aegis. Like, <laughs> not even that. So that Mako is just being into the tier two. Why not? Not really much the Blacklist want to do to try and stop it. Um, without a Blink Dagger on Ku, can't have the reach there. And he's just got a Vlad's, Vladimir's offering also completed, but still just a bit more auras, a bit more tank ability, but there's no fights to tank against, so why does it matter? To be fair, you want to have that tank ability when they try to kill you, right? Because then you make sure you keep it zero. You do not want to be the first one to die. 
in, a, in this game, right? Like whoever, whoever dies first, there's just gonna be a lot of mockery coming after them. It's like, you ruined it. We were having a clean sheet kind of game. <laughs> Can you imagine destroying the Ancient with zero kills? Do you think it's possible? It surely is not possible at all. It's possible, but I mean, it's not, it's not likely. It's called the Gandhi style playing Dota. <laughs> yeah. Win through uh, peaceful protests. That's how we like it. But you know, eventually the protest does win. Talent take away the tier two. Blacklist just disengage without committing to a fight. And uh, yeah, 22 minutes now. Still less than 1k gold advantage. Like, Gaben is so confused right now. Yes. His win probability is still like 53%. He has no idea what's happening in this game. I think as soon as First Blood is found, it's going to be like 90% win probability in their favor. By the way, the graph never went more than like a thousand in either anyone's favor. It's been oh. like dead. No. Tim? Oh no! Could it be no. it! Up to the high ground! No. He's trying to live! It's not! He's gone! First blood has been picked up! 22 and a half minutes in, and yeah, rightly deserved that tip. Finally, someone gets it. First you, Tim's! Yeah, dear. Well, that happens. Uh, 22 minutes. It. I was thinking we might not get a we might not get a goal before halftime, but it looks like Tim's he obliges us. So it's not a football game, it is in fact a game of Dota. Oh dearie me. Well, uh okay, well has the win probability changed that much? Ooh, it's skewing up a little bit. It's now <laughs> slightly in the favour there of Talon. So there you go, first blood means everything. It's going for a really good item in the Wraith pack. Obviously, this is not as good as it used to be because it doesn't reduce magic damage, but against the, you know, the TA and the Nature's Prophet, Wraith mm. pack feels really good. It does, yeah. Like, like we were saying earlier, the huge amounts of minus armor that Talon have got, having that, was it 40% damage reduction? 30, 30 yeah. That's, it was a, that's a big, sizable chunk of HP that you can actually keep up with that. I mean, it also works really well against the Bloodseeker. The Bloodseeker has a little bit more mixed damage with the Rupture and... Uh, the blood right, you know, this pure damage doesn't get reduced, but even then, it's really good against him. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I feel really bad. I was thinking we're gonna. I, I I really hope we find what is the record for like a pro match with uh, with kills. Yeah, All right, we'll have to. Uh, well, we've got to remember, 22 minutes 30 seconds or 22 30, 29, something like that was the exact number, and uh, yeah, we we will have to find out because yeah, that can be pretty exciting being a part of history. We could like etch our names onto that one, Otomo. I the, like most, the most boring the most start boring. to a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not a good thing to be tied to, is it? No, no, no they'll, they'll be like, "This was the most boring game ever," and it was these two who were we'll like, "Yes, it was us. We tried." Oh, oh no, that's gonna feel real sad. Oh, but you know, might see up here yet. Yeah, Twenty-three has been caught. Gonna be set out from the LSA, and that is a dead Bloodseeker. Unfortunately, him couldn't get an opportunity to pop the BKB. Just the chain stuns came in, and that was a pretty nice kill to find. It was also a double damage on Tim's. Not that that really did anything at all. 360 damage, mate. That's 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 all he needs to contribute. Big value. You know, he, he made it more damage than Cuckoo. Uh, he did more, uh, so that he's he's definitely earning his keep. <laughs> that is. It is is far stretched from the uh, Ricky we saw like. A, well, nearly a week ago, I suppose, where he was like level six at eight minutes in, and he was just running around killing people as a support. Unfortunately, can't quite do the same in this one, as no one's dying at all. It's very hard for him to find people. It's scarier to play the Ricky when you're up against Nature's Prophet, because you know he has like he can just show up anywhere and help people out. And Mikoto, he went back for like you said, mentioned the Desert, but he still has the shards. So Cuckoo, it feels like he's not going to have a good time getting black holes off until he gets oh. Bottom lane. Uh, looks like he's been fine. Uh, it won't be easy for him to get those bl black holes off until he has a, a BKB at least, and even then you still have to worry about the the Rubik. Yeah, definitely. There's going to be that potential with the black hole still. But looks like we might have another fight coming. Tim's leading the charge. Who's going to get hit with the dart first? But actually, gets immediately hit from the uh, from the dust. He's just gone right now. Oh, now out comes the rupture as well. On towards the death prophet, locked in place. It looks like this is a very awkward fight here for uh, Blacklist, and Carl's just trying to survive as long as he can. Cycle onto the creeps, but the rupture does end, but still, there's so many slows and chunk damage going on. Eventually, he is able to walk out, but they've got the vision on him because of the uh, thirst there from 23. They can keep charging forwards. BKB from Raven avoids getting caught, and everyone just mass TPs out. They are not interested in sticking. But everyone, Mikko, charging in, going to force out the overgrowth. Actually, jabs! 
He's actually the first person to die there, overstepping his mark. Carl now gonna turn off the 23s. The heals came in, so he runs out of the thirst, and the Bloodseeker just gets killed. Wow, it, what? Oh, that, that fight looked like it was going all talent, and somehow they overextend, and their, their off lane and carry just die in a matter of seconds. That's time for Carl's internet to also have issues, I'd say, because that was a that was a good time to pause. Uh, you know, they put everything to chasing him. Jabs teleported to catch him. Uh, 23 Savage chased him, went past here too, but Exorcism ended just in time. And Jabs, you really underestimate the damage for the Exorcism. He showed up next to him and Carl's like, okay, I'll just shred you. You know, he's got the Witch Blade, he's got a Spirit Siphon, he's got the Exorcism. He just gets, like, just brings him down instantly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Talon. They overextended, and I gotta say, Blacklist, the way they kept Carl alive in that situation was incredible. Yeah, I, I have you know? no idea how he did. Like, he was so close to dying many times in a row, but he just kept on going with a little train that could. Just chugging it's, along. Yeah, it's fantastic. Like, the way they were able to just, you know, keep him alive. And a lot of it comes down, of course, to the living armor, and you also threw out the good nature's grass to make sure the Bloodseeker could get, get his claws on him. And we're down to another dead even game. Five kills in 27 minutes, though. And uh, AU's got the Blink Dagger, so he's got, we've seen, you know, of a Black Hole Lands, you put this on top of it, or even just after, we've seen so many good overgrowths coming out from these three and Protector players, mm -hmm. and it always gets me hyped, you know, so it's not the most visually amazing spell, but when it happens, it's like, wow, yeah. we got four of them. <laughs> it can be pretty damn big. When eventually we do see it, oh, it looks like Tim's, uh, he's just been kicked off. Oh, Bako, looking for more, actually, does also see Raven, but, yeah, without any help, it's a difficult kill to find. I was going to say as well, like, these, this sort of game with very few kills doesn't really benefit the new Desolator, you know? You want, you want lots yes. of kills to start getting these charges online, but still only four bonus damage at uh, close to 28 minutes in. Not quite what Makoto would like. All the kills, by the way, have been on Tim's. You know, getting that Ricky out. Yes, his net worth has suffered, but as a Ricky, you don't really care. He's, gonna, he's very close to the Aether Lens. He's just going to recipe away, and he's just going to be fine, so... Plus, I gotta say, Tim's, he's a, he's a showman. He likes giving people something to watch. I th I'm pretty sure he giving, he's giving these kills just for chat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is, like, he is the only person to die so far on Blacklist. <laughs> he's literally all of their deaths. Wraith pack is available. Be Blink Dagger next for Cuckoo. Uh, it looks Luckily like... for him. Oh, 23. Maybe in some danger. Getting hunted from pretty much the entirety of Blacklist. Nice little trap, though. Making the space. Okay. Good Tips ward. does get the dagger down. Is there the follow-up? No, because more four staffs pushing people away. And no one else dropping down now. But Roshan has obviously respawned. And Talon definitely do not want to like move away from this area. Mako, actually, he doesn't even care about waiting. He might just go in for the old double meld strike and try and get this as fast as possible. And is he, is he going to go straight up? It seems like... I mean, there is a nice ward, the Blacklist just planted by Tim's in that area. But of course, it doesn't see in the Roche area, and you know, they weren't able to spot anyone walking into it. So unfortunately for Blacklist, Talon gets the second A second Roche. A just... Um, so I was going to say, the shard is going to go on the Bloodseeker, and he just goes to Mikoto. This is a really nice shard as well, that extra pure damage, mm. as well as the heal. Yeah, it definitely helps remove the uh, Death Prophet as fast as possible. It's going to be a big factor, actually bringing Carl down to his knees. But still now, 4k gold advantage. We actually started to see a bit of a net worth build up. Like, <laughs> finally, must not be seeing uh, some action going on. As maybe Talon with the second Aegis might try and, you know, potentially go high ground. So they're all sort of gathering up towards this top jungle right now. Do you think it's too early to go for the tier threes or maybe just go for a tier two instead? I think going for a three two is, three, sorry, a tier three is pretty ambitious. You know, you're gonna wanna get a couple of pickoffs first. Uh, to be fair, on Blacklist International, their defense is okay. You know, you've got the Midnight's Pulse and you've got the Nature's Grasp. But you also are up against the TA. So TA can just go and wail three or four times, go back, and when their faction charges end, it's, it's pretty solid for the hero. So, uh, Blacklist is the one who's actually being a little bit more aggressive here. They want to take this tier two, they might be able to take the outpost right after. Yeah, let's see if they can get it down. I mean, Raven is definitely turning into a bit of a Gatling gun now. Super fast oh. attacks speed, a lot of damage. Do cut down the trees to spoil 23 to shucks out the Glepne. Meanwhile, though, the sports are coming in from the top. Talent getting involved. Trap does land with the two with the silence, but it doesn't look like Talon really have the means of chasing after him. So just getting a free courier for now. And you do see Raven hitting onto the creeps. I'm not really sure about who he is to want to jump onto. Tim's 
Death number four. Here we go. Oh, wait. Or is it? Oh. He's out. <laughs> Very close. Uh, I think there's a slight delay in, in uh, how they were able to do that, but no problem. Tim's saying that this time it's not. He's not going to give them an extra kill here. It makes out just fine. But Talon, they are slowly grow growing their net worth lead. A lot of it comes from this farm being slightly less than the uh, other cores. And of course from uh, Q, who's just having an absolutely fantastic game. Blink Dagger, Force Staff, Aether Lens, and going to go for the Aghanim Scepter. Not the Shard, he wants the Scepter straight up. Big items. Big items, that's where, you know, at 31 minutes, that's the time you start building the big boy items. And start trying to take more dominant position in the game. It is still Raven at top of the net worth. Just a thousand gold ahead of Makoto, which, you know, isn't really that much of an advantage for him. But he's feeling confident. Still got eight seconds on his BKB. Maelstrom, bots, Hurricane Pike, trying to go into his own Assault Curas next, which will be a nice tool to help counter the one that's come up for the Nature's Prophet. Because, you know, that, that's just even more minus armor. Not the talent even needed it. It still helps, right? The, like, the tree and extra armor is still, like, it's still a lot. It can go up to 20 once he reaches level 20, so uh, more mice armor is never going to be a bad thing. I mean, it's not even just a, to counter the tree and Lina, just shred anyone else. You know, anyone you catch a couple of hits and they're dead. And towers that fall like they're nothing. Mm. So that's a, that's a scary thing for Blacklist. If they lose a fight next to their side, on their side of the map, Talon can easily take Raxus. Oh, oh yeah. Mako. Ooh, nice fingers there to get out of the range of the uh, stun there, but still, it's the rupture goes immediately on towards Carl. He can't move anything at all. Black Hole as well. It does get the grab onto Jabs, but it doesn't last long. It's cancelled so quickly from the silence that comes out from the TA. And Blacklist just falling apart of the seams right now. Tim's going to be the third casualty. And it looks like the other two survivors on Blacklist will be able to TP out. But regardless, big, big win coming out there from Talon. I'll start that fight with barely any health and immediately got shut down. And we can see that without the BKB, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna see a good black hole. It's like it has to he has to have the BKB. There's just too many silences and control. Lincoln Sphere later on to control the Rubik, but you have to have the BKB. Like you said, we just saw the silence come out and instantly he got he got this black hole was cancelled after like one second or one and a half seconds. Yeah, not the ideal position he wants to be, but obviously prioritizing the Guardian Greaves and Wraith Pack delaying the BKB quite significantly. Um he hasn't got one. Okay, he's actually decided to kill a blink dagger. Um, how you? How do you feel about that? Do you, do you think that might be okay, or does he just really need the BKB instead? It's fine. It's if he, whether he goes for blink or BKB, it's fine as long as he gets both. You know, it's like you kind of need both. I don't. I would prefer if he went for the BKB because you have AU to set you up. He's got the blink dagger on the tree end. You know, you have a, what four seconds to walk in and try to get something. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, you know, Blink Dagger, you know, even though those four seconds are not guaranteed, right? Anyone could just BKB, dispel it and stuff. So he wants to be able to follow up instantly. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah we'll see Do if it ends that... up panning out for him. Do you know that we have less than 10 kills in 34 minutes? What were you saying about uh, Southeast Asian Dota being aggressive? Uh, the fact that it's not. Maybe that could it's be not, the point. <laughs> not all. Not this game, oh, a little grab there. He's just gone from 23. Raven at least able to avoid the stomp. But looks like maybe they'll try and turn this round to grab another four stop avoiding the LSA. Instead, they got the stun turned around onto Raven. Try to focus down this leader. But Raven standing on this ground. Doesn't have any fiery stalls. Got to try and build it back up. It's just not enough time. And Makoto comes in to easily get the kill. The stolen LSA lands on the two with the Glepnir fall up. What a fantastic grab to come out there from Q. Gives him the plus two. And it's just Carl, the only survivor. Just chilling in the base with the old ghosties, and again, probably going to see some high ground push. Actually, Carl trying something to go solo there onto Bakoto, but the Hurricane Pike making the space. And the extra, and then another four staff also helping out. But you know, Blacklist by not taking fights early and delaying the game, it actually kind of hurts them. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second, see so how this one's going to go. But if you have long ultimates like like cooldowns and you don't use them at early game. You're saying like, oh, Carl's jumping in again. He's, he's constantly jumping in, gets dragged back into the stolen LSA, hit by the silence, hit by the stomp. He's just gone. Down for 67, does have a buyback, which may be forced to get expended once the lean is up. But actually, it looks like uh, Talon got to pay respects to those coming respawns and just decide to back on out. The, we're seeing Q become a core, you know, on this uh, Rubik. We just saw that like, gigantic light strike array. Absolutely fantastic. He's also got a psychic headband, so even more cast range. Look at the range of his lifts. Like, it's. He can just stay very far away with a blink dagger as well for more reach, so he can just catch. The... 
he's not going to be caught by the black hole. And if he's not caught, he's going to be able to steal it every time. That's just the nature of the game right now. It is, yeah. And they're going for the uh, the Aghanim Scepter next as well. Could see the potential of those two spell steals. So, like, obviously, he's going to save one for the black hole, but with an extra plus one skill. LSA is always a good steal, of course. But, yeah, Ku's going to be starting having a real nice game. So I want to go back to this point about not using your ultimates early when you have long cooldown ones, like let's say RP and things. Mm -hmm. Because let's say you're, 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 you're going to play a game of Dota for 40 minutes. If you only use your abilities in the last 10 minutes, you kind of wasted 20 minutes of cooldown, if that makes sense. So yeah. we saw we saw like very few... I don't think we've seen an overgrowth. We saw maybe a couple of black holes in a 36-minute game. Obviously you're against Rubik and you don't want to spam it and give it away, but you would hope that there'd be a little bit more usage of these high cooldowns yeah it seems like as you were saying earlier that they should have tried to force some fights a bit sooner on but definitely waiting for a long time and it looks like it has come to punish them 19k gold advantage at 37 minutes in 88 percent win probability as well in the favor of uh, talon and it's getting harder and harder roshan number three potentially up in five seconds we'll see how long it's actually going to be of course about the shards for Cuckoo, but either but he knows they hear better than I do. Yeah, this uh, this delayed approach by Blacklist came back to bite them in the blubber. You know, while both teams were content to farm, yours you're the team with the higher cooldown. And uh, you look at Talon, what's what's their long cooldown exactly? Rupture? Is that it? That's is that that's all they got. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I suppose Earth Splitter is relatively long, hundred seconds, but that skills just a bonus like it's not necessary yes. to take fights by any means like they could easily go for engagements with that still on cooldown yeah it's not that they don't rely on it as much as you know blacklist relies on exorcism and black hole mm. especially now with the twenty thousand gold behind they don't have vision of the area they want to invade will they really go for it look at the warding coming from town they see they have one lane ward and two cliff wars there's no way that uh, like they won't see blacklist coming yeah they got all the information in the world meanwhile Blacklist just playing in the dark and Tim's darkness as he just dies. Ku trying to do what he can but gets deleted and in the back close jabs is there on top of Raven. Trying to go for the TP out but that's not going to make oh. It's not going to get anywhere. Uh, just three kills. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And yeah, Talon just going to further the lead in this game. And they're looking pretty damn dominant to secure their position in the grand finals. Might be, a, we might see another pause coming out real soon if Talon continues on this trajectory. Which there's no reason not to. Uh, we talked about the Salt Curious and the Deso, which means, guess what? Towers melt really fast. Uh, jabs, he just goes bottom though, just, just clearing out these creeps. So, uh, not the fastest push. I thought that uh, they might book it for the mid lane, but they might be worried that Ravens has a buyback, which he doesn't. Yeah, if they knew that he had no buyback, 100%, all five of them would be here right now, trying to shove it in. You know, they might try and be setting up going for the bottom set of barracks as well. Seems like there's another creep wave coming in. But it depends how quickly they can actually clear this up and... Like I said, with the added help of the Assault Curass, the buildings do not last long. Oh, a couple of pokes there onto Jabs, but again, all the four staffs in the world, easily able to get him out of danger. Raven's up in 20, and looks like... Looks like Talon really figured out how to take care of this Lina Treant Protector combo. You know, they have this nice triple core lineup that does heavy physical damage, along with an Elder Titan. Yeah, he, they're, just, they're just having a lot of fun with it in this game. Cuckoo, yeah. if there's any, if there's ever been a game where Cuckoo needs to, you know, perform like a god, it's this one. Yeah, definitely. He's got to start getting those minimum three, four man black holes whilst the other two have already used their spells to cancel out the black hole. It's, it's a tall order. It's not going to be the easiest game for him whatsoever, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But still yet to accomplish too much. Meanwhile, that is going to be Roshan number three going into the hands of Talon. Uh, Axe Blessing is in the inventory of Ollie right now, and he's actually going to use it. it. Okay. Oh, wow. So we have the, the BKB uh, Elder Titan running around. Uh, is that really the best person they could have given it to? I, I think it's for the, for fun. There's no way that they're just <laughs> doing it. Like, I don't think you really want to give it to him, uh, but why not, you know? Blood Mist is a pretty garbage ability. And, uh, oh, oh, Cuckoo, Cuckoo, right. no, not like oh. this! Uh, this Cloud Tribe makes face. LSA does land on two, they focus on the jab, so he's still got the cheese, pops it, turn around, and just look at all the damage that just comes raining in. Raven's trying to get himself oh, away, gosh. it's not gonna work, and yeah, GG is called. Wow, that was a very quick way to end.
And that is it. Talon, they take the series 2-1. That was probably the most one-sided game we've had today. I mean, game number one was quite one-sided, but that one was just... I mean, well, after we got the 23-minute first blood, of course, but and then it was just all Talon. Yeah, I mean, there was that nice movement by Carl where he got a double kill. And I think that was the only time that we actually saw Blacklist get kills. For the rest of the game, it was just Talon. 18-3, 40-minute game, one of the most awkward games we've, we've seen in a long time. Uh, but congratulations to, to Talon. They take it. Yeah, they do. And uh, yeah, feeling quite confident now they've secured their position, obviously, in the grand finals. But it is not mm -hmm. over yet for Blacklist Rivalry. Obviously, they do drop down into the lower brackets. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, obviously, they will play the winner of the next series, which is going to be Fnatic versus Polaris, which uh, isn't too far away. Oh, your camera isn't turned on. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> we, got a, we got a little square. There's a little square. <laughs> Actually, I'm turning on and off here, but I don't know what's happening. It's all right. It's all right. We'll it's, fix it in the it's break. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Who cares about the camera? You know, everyone gets to see the good look of one of us, right? That's, that's the... true. I was, yeah. was going to say, they get the handsome guy. What do they need me for? <laughs> nah, people want the top G, mate. That's, where, that's what chat all goes for. <laughs> well, uh, I'm but he... married, so there's no point in seeing me. You, know? you, can't, you, can't, you can't touch this, as they say. Uh, fair enough. Well, yeah, that is it. Um, is there anything else we can say about their series, or pretty much cookie cutter, isn't it? That's pretty pretty cookie cutter. But I, it was I think Talon really plays well. They avoided uh, Blacklist early on, making sure that they had all these ways to counter the Enigma, and then they only joined the fight when they felt like they had an overwhelming advantage. And uh, Blacklist, maybe they should have pushed the issue just a little bit more. You know, you're the mm. team early on. You got the you got the black hole. You got the overgrowth. You could have taken these fights, but. They were content to farm. If they won, we would have said they were geniuses to farm. But either way, I would still would have liked if they had been more active and used their ultimates a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. And uh, unfortunately, that sort of play mistake ended up costing them. And yeah, down they go to lower bracket. But obviously, we got another series coming, guys. As I was just saying, it is Polaris versus Fnatic for the lower brackets, which will be coming up in about 15 minutes' time. So not too long to wait at all. So uh, yeah, do stick around. More Dota 2 to come. See you then.